that, Madam Chair. Uh, and wanted to uh, ask Mr. Siminski specifically about um, a concern that I have with uh, the flaring of natural gas. Uh, as you know, it, it, in the Bakken, they are producing a lot of oil, but I, know, I also know that they do not have the pipeline capacity, and so they are flaring quite a bit of natural gas. Uh, the Texas Railroad Commission does a really good job in Texas of keeping up with the number of permits uh, that are given to operators, but I know in the Eagleford uh, in particular, and even some in my area in the Barnett Shell, uh, that there is some uh, flaring uh, going. I know you specifically talked uh, a little bit earlier about the rising cost of natural gas as it, uh, uh, as it goes uh, worldwide, particularly if uh, the Department of Energy uh, uh, decides uh, to export uh, liquefied natural gas, or LNG, is there any technology uh, on the horizon that would make it, you know, where we wouldn't have to, to flare so much natural gas so we would have more in quantity? I mean, I think that that should be one real environmental concern that we have, particularly when you start talking about, you know, drilling in remote places uh, like uh, Alaska, where there would be, uh, you know, a, a lot of associated gas produced with oil production that would have to be flared off. Uh, Congressman Veazey, thank you very much. Uh, just to put some numbers uh, on the flaring, uh, although there is a significant amount of flaring taking place in the uh, Bakken formation right now, I think the latest statistics uh, from North Dakota uh, suggest that it is actually coming down. It had been as high as 35 or 36 percent of the gas. It is now down uh, slightly below 30 percent. This is usually indicative of uh, infrastructure build out needed in uh, a new area. Uh, the gas is associated with the oil production in North Dakota. Uh, I suspect that over time the pipeline uh, networks will be built out in North Dakota and those numbers will come down even further. Uh, although it seems like a lot of uh, a gas when you just look at the percentage in North Dakota, the amount in North Dakota is less than one-third of one percent, so less than one-third of one percent of total. Uh, U.S. gas production, so it is actually a very small number. Uh, and you are correct, sir, that uh, there actually has been some flaring in the Eagle Ford, essentially for the same reason. Eagle Ford is in a part of Texas that is actually uh, not heavily populated. It doesn't have the same in, uh, pipeline infrastructure uh, that you see in other parts of Texas. Uh, and it will just take a little bit of time. The uh, companies uh, are working on that. On the technology side, uh, there has been uh, an effort to look into small LNG uh, uh, liquefaction facilities that might be uh, put in place uh, in some of these remote areas where you could turn uh, that natural gas that is being flared into uh, a liquid, which would be easier to transport. So I think that there is a lot of thinking going on in the industry, and although uh, those uh, satellite pictures showing, you know, the sky at, at, at night and the amount of, uh, of light being given off in some of these new uh, producing areas uh, seems startling. Uh, it's, uh, it is, I think, a relatively small proportion. It is fairly normal in the course of development in new areas. Very quickly, in Alaska, the, there is a lot of gas that comes up in Alaska with the oil, but it is re-injected. Uh, back into the formation, and so there is uh, very little uh, flaring taking place in Alaska. And uh, uh, one more question about, uh, about the, the rising prices, uh, particularly if we end up uh, doing, uh, exporting LNG. I know that some of our manufacturers and uh, some of our plants that are dependent upon uh, the use of uh, natural gas were concerned about those rising prices because they have built them into their uh, business models. Where do you see the appetite, particularly in Europe, for the production of natural gas, particularly as it pertains to frac you know, fracturing and some of the other environmental uh, things that we have talked about earlier? Because, as you know, particularly in my, in my area, on the Barnet Shale, to where, you know, I mean, I, I think that we have, you know, a gas lease, you know, on, on one of our properties, on a, literally on, in a single family, uh, you know, setting. I have a frack pond, pipelines, like re in the middle of Fort Worth, 700, you know, thousand people. What is, you, what, what do you, th what do you, as, as far as the future is concerned, Europe's appetite for you know, developing any, you know, formations that they see? Because I would think that that would be interesting. I don't know that they are even, you know, to a certain extent, can sometimes be even more environmentally sensitive to things than we are. There are a number of countries in Europe uh, that are 
very taking uh, hydraulic fracturing very seriously. Uh, Poland, for example, Romania, the Ukraine, uh, there's activity underway by industry there. Uh, the main thing that makes uh, U.S. Uh, LNG exports so attractive to uh, some companies and consumers in Europe uh, and in Asia as well is that um, in most of the rest of the world, LNG prices are matched one for one to oil prices, and in the U.S. it's a separate market. Uh, the, the models that we've run at EIA do incorporate the existing uh, already permitted facility in Louisiana uh, that's going to export LNG, and we think uh, that exports of LNG from the West Coast of Canada and possibly even Alaska into Asia would make economic sense, but there are policy issues obviously involved in making that decision.